Hi everyone, Path here, and in this video I want to talk about a few fake particles, or quasi-particles, that physicists use to massively simplify whatever system we're studying. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. In my opinion, the easiest way to learn about quasi-particles is by seeing an example. So let's start by imagining a solid made up of lots of atoms arranged neatly in a lattice, sort of a, a grid formation. Then let's imagine that we pass a sound wave through it, which is basically created by poking one end of the solid, which then sends a disturbance or a wave along the length of the solid. Now, this seems like a fairly simple system, but it very quickly becomes complicated when we think about multiple waves passing through this solid. For example, if we were to send a wave in this direction, and then at a later time we also sent a wave in this direction, then the system becomes complicated. To study the interaction of these two waves, we'd have to think about how each individual atom in the solid would wobble around. And it only gets worse when we have more waves passing through the solid. Luckily, however, it turns out that we can treat each wave as a made up or quasi particle we can imagine a particle passing through the solid, and this particle can interact with other similar particles in a surprisingly logical way, following the conservation of momentum and other such laws. These quasi-particles are much easier to deal with than having to calculate the motion of every single atom in the solid due to every single wave. Now, these particles that we have made up are known as phonons. They represent sound waves, hence phonons. I've made a whole video discussing phonons in a bit more detail, so check it out up here if you're interested. But in this video, I want to take a look at other such imaginary, made up, quasi particles, if you will, that physicists use to simplify otherwise complicated systems. One such quasi particle can be thought about like this. First, let's imagine an atom which has four electrons in its outermost shell. So this is the nucleus and here are the electron shells with electrons either fully or partially filling them up. For simplicity, we won't show the inner filled shells since they're not important here, but they do exist. Only the outermost shell is partially filled, meaning this atom can form bonds with other atoms around it in order to start filling up this shell. This is basically chemistry at this point, but stick with me here. So if we now look at a nice grid of these atoms, we see that each atom now has eight electrons in its outer shell because adjacent atoms are sharing electrons in what is known as a covalent bond. These shells are filled when they have eight electrons. And of course, this doesn't happen for the atoms at the edges of the material, but this is not so important for us here. Okay, so now let's imagine something causes one of these electrons to gain energy and leave this stable low energy configuration. This could be caused by something like thermal energy being given to the material. In this scenario, we now have a space where an electron could be. A hole, almost. Essentially, there is a space for an electron so that the bond between these two atoms can be reformed. In some scenarios, an electron from an adjacent bond can be transferred to this position and the bond is reformed. And this can happen multiple times. Now, if we want to study this behavior, we could look at each electron, where it comes from, where it goes to, and so on. Or we could just study the movement of the hole itself. It's not a real particle, but in this animation, we can easily see it moves roughly left to right without really caring about the electrons themselves. So our new quasiparticle here is the electron hole. Makes life much easier for studying the system. Now, obviously it doesn't make sense for a hole to exist on a small scale. It can't exist where there's no possibility of an electron being present in the first place. But if we zoom out, it's very helpful to study the motion of holes within a solid. Now, couple of things worth mentioning here. Firstly, this diagram is a very simplified version of what actually happens in materials like this. Real quantum mechanical systems are a lot more complicated, but in many ways, the idea is the same, and this is an easy way to visualize it. Secondly, the quasi-particle known as a whole can be given some interesting properties that can make calculations and the study of materials like this even easier. The best example of this is that holes can be said to have a charge of plus E. 
The charge is the same size as the charge on an electron, but the opposite sign, since it's positive. We might justify this by thinking that an electron is negatively charged, so a hole must be the opposite, since it's the lack of an electron. But the real reason is a bit more complicated than this. Technically, if a hole is where an electron could be, but isn't, then the hole should be neutral, since there's nothing there, right? But before the electron was given enough energy to leave behind a hole, the number of electrons in this region of space balanced out the number of protons in the nuclei of each one of these atoms. When an electron escapes, however, we can now think of this scenario as the electron carrying away negative charge to wherever it goes in the material. And now there's one more positive charge in the nucleus than there are electrons surrounding it. We assign this extra positive charge to the hole, which is why we say the hole is positively charged. This helps us study the motion of positive charge throughout the material, roughly speaking. So that was a very brief look at electron holes. Let's stick with the theme of electrons for a moment once again moving around in a lattice. But this time, let's think about the electron or electrons that have been given enough energy to escape their bonds, and as a result, they're free to move around the material. If we think about a single electron moving through this material, then we would need to study how it behaves as a result of the regular arrangement of positive charges that it passes through, the nuclei, as well as all the electrons it ends up interacting with. By the way, this regular arrangement of positive charges is sometimes called a periodic potential. This is because the arrangement is regularly repeating with positive charges spaced equal distances apart, which is why it's periodic. And the positive charges, of course, have their own electric potential. Hence, we have a periodic potential. If we were to study this system carefully and thoroughly, we'd have to account for each of the charges that the electron interacts with by considering the forces exerted by the positive charges on the electron, as well as the negative charges, the other electrons surrounding it. And remember, it's not just the nearest charges that will have an impact. Charges that are further away will also exert a force on the electron, meaning the system becomes very complex very quickly. However, it turns out that on a large enough scale, meaning if we zoom out enough, an electron in our material can actually be treated as if it were moving through a vacuum or empty space if the electron had a different mass. This quasi-particle that we've come up with can be called the electron quasi-particle. And in more complicated materials where the periodic potential in this direction, for example, is different to the one in this direction, the effective mass can depend on what direction the electron quasi-particle is moving in. So we've looked at three examples of quasi-particles that emerge from much more complex systems. We've looked at phonons, electron holes, and electron quasi-particles. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to find out more about each one of these, as well as learn more about quasi-particles such as plasmons, magnons, and more. And with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Please check out my merch linked in the description below. It features a quantum dice design based on a famous quote from Albert Einstein. Finally, I'd like to thank my Giga patrons and all of my other patrons over on my Patreon page, which is also linked down below if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.